loading snacks. Are y'all all right? Everybody feeling good? No, no. Good to hear it. Let's do it again. Are y'all feeling good? So coming to the stage right now. Some of you may know him as Squidward. Do it again, do it again, like loud. See, that was pretty good. She almost had an LLP by herself. Roger Bumpus, coming to the stage right now. <laughs> Go Orioles! <laughs> Can y'all hear him okay? His voice is very different from Kevin Radiant's. So, just want to make sure you can hear him okay? Yes. Good. Good. Okay. So, first and foremost, I'm positive that we have people that have questions. Are you okay answering questions for people? Absolutely. I, I depend on all of you to come up with questions so that I can have something to actually say. <laughs> the problem is, in this sort of environment, it's going to be very difficult to hear you. So speak in your outdoor voice, yell it if you want. We have a microphone, and we will be that to people, which should be awesome. Look, people are here their hands up. We haven't even done anything yet. Yes. So, there are no stupid questions, only stupid people asking stupid questions. Try to stay out of that category if you can. You are full born. All right, so are you okay to just start it with questions from the crowd, right? Yeah, unless you have any questions of your own to begin with. I like your questions. I'll ask in the tweet. All right, let's ask some questions. All right, so the Thatcher's here. Go, Maryland! That's what I'm talking about. I got one down here, right, right up front. Let's make sure the mic is on. So excited. So excited. Big Terry, my family would be very excited. <laughs> Okay. 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 One device at a time. Right. What's your question? Hi. I was wondering, when it came to Stephen Hillenberg's tribute for the Super Bowl in 2019, did you look at the, the script and think to yourself, I don't think this is what the fans want? And did you try to maybe tell the NFL, hey, I don't think introducing Travis Scott is what these people want? Okay. First and foremost, the way it came off was not the way we planned it. And that was a surprise. I was supposed to introduce uh, Maroon 5 and they were going to play uh, Sweet Sweet Victory from Band Geeks. That's what everybody wanted to have happen. Somehow, and I can't explain why, it, it didn't work that way and all of a sudden it changed to uh, the way it came out. So, I got in trouble with the NFL. Because I posted on Facebook that I'm introducing them, and they did change from the, uh, the scripted uh, version, and, and, and they didn't want me to, you know, say anything, so they they reprimanded me. The NFL reprimanded me. I feel very proud of that. I was gonna ask, what is it like being in trouble with the NFL? What's that like? Being in trouble with the NFL? Oh, you gotta do laps. So, <laughs> hey, thank you, Ron. Burpee. Oh yeah, yeah. Drop and give me 15, you know, too. It's a lot. All right, who else? That's all the way down here at the end. We need questions. <laughs> I am an empty vessel. Holy cow, that's so This is so awesome. It's like a dream from Jeff So anyways, uh, I have a question for you. How do you perceive the evolution of SpongeBob's writing style and animation from its earlier days? For example, when it included subtle uh, adult humor, but yet yeah, remained happily friendly to the least current generation. Specifically, I'd like to know your opinion on the style of writing. Do you find it appealing? Do you consider it improvement? Or do you perceive it as a step back from what we've been I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Basically, yeah, basically you know, it's lost some of its adult humor, but it, and, and also it looks completely Well, I, 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 would, I would disagree that it lost its physical humor. Uh, in any long-lasting uh, show, there has to be an evolution. You have to go places with it. We first started out as characters, very uh, monotone. I was like, blah, 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 blah. And then they began to give us more different scenarios and different uh, uh, scripts to, uh, to, 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 to perform. And you have to spread your wings and become more fleshed out. And so Squidward actually became more my overall acting style and my sense of humor as, as the years have gone. When we first started, of course, we were all 
in the game, traditional animation. And then the computer got more and more involved in it, and now it's all digital. In the middle years, it is said, and I, and I tend to agree, uh, we kind of did the same role model things for our characters over and over again, and we were almost getting to where we were phoning it in. And the writers and the animators got together, and they decided that we're going to go back to our roots, which is Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Remember Ren and Stimpy? Yeah. Fine, fine, black cartoon. Yeah. Well, some of our writers are from Ren and Stimpy. The guy that plays Plankton, uh, Doug Lawrence, he's from Ren and Stimpy. In fact, we have a convention that, that Ren and Stimpy used, that we still use in our show, which is called the Gross Up. It's a still frame. Someone, someone will say, uh, does this look unsure to you? And they cut to me, it's a very detailed painting, gross, you know, everything. That's what Ren and Stimpy used to do. So, also in Ren and Stimpy, when a character gets really excited, the drawing of him exaggerates, exaggerates you know, and we've gotten to where we do that now. Personally, I think sometimes a little too much, because the person can just be mildly upset and he, he distorts so much he doesn't even look like his character anymore. But we've had to expand both script-wise and animation-wise, and so I think we're at a good point right now. The scripts that I am doing currently are just absolutely wonderful, and we love to throw back stuff, like uh, his many days an instrument from Band Geeks. We had a, a, a talent show in a recent episode where uh, uh, Patrick actually comes out with a jar of mayonnaise to play. <laughs> and he does. Uh, and so we, and we brought back Nosferatu and various other lines and stuff, and every so often I'll see an opportunity to say, hey, it's a, it's a throwback to the line, you know, so we, we throw those in there. So yes, in, in answer, a simple answer to your question, I am happy with where we are. And, you know, every long path has its stumbles and has its little ups and downs. And so we are, we are human, even though we are cartoon characters. Very much so. We have another question. Thanks, here. These questions sound like they're from Mensa. Yeah, that was a very detailed question. They don't all have to be that detailed. That's my, what my favorite color is. She has a simple question. What is your favorite episode of Spongebob? Now that's more like it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can use Crusty Crab Pizza. Crusty Crab Pizza? Crusty Crab, yeah, yeah! <laughs> Coffee, liquid talent. <laughs> My favorite episodes, I have several. Um, I, I have to say collectively, I believe that Band Geeks is, is everyone's favorite episode. Yes, we love it. And he, it has those portable lines like the mayonnaise line and there's a, there's a little point in there that, that is just my little favorite visual gag. They're just getting ready to go on stage and Swilliam comes in and he says, is that your band? And they cut to the band and, and Spongebob is in the front going. <laughs> and they, they cut back to me and she just say, that's his eager effects. I just, it's one of my just little silly moments that I really like. But, yes, pizza delivery, and, um, dying for pop is one of my favorite We have some fans on page. Tom Kenny and I have, uh, every so often we have just episodes that are just me and me. And we have a nice chemistry. Uh, if you're one of the older people, you remember the TV show The Honeymooners, and there was this goofy guy, Norton, and uh, was a, a, a big, blustery guy. And ever so often, the goofy guy would just go on and on and on and on and on, and finally, the, the big guy would just go, All right! You know, so we, we do that a lot. And it showed the soft side of Squidward that he wanted to give SpongeBob his, uh, his nice day, but a lot of good little gags in there. Also, uh, the uh, Hashley and Slasher. There's another one, as shows have gone on, we do live action cuts. And I've got a couple of, 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 of them, including the entire show where we're all doing our characters live action. But there was a show called Goons on the Moon. Sandy's rocket goes to the moon, and Squidward is a stowaway. And he gets out of the ship and he falls into this cave system under the surface of the moon. He's trying to get his way out. 
and he uh, pokes his head in the, uh, the hole three different times. And each time it's like something live action, like he's inside a guitar, a country club band, uh, or whatever. And the third time, he sticks his head out and he comes through the animation computer screen of, a, of a, an animator at Nickelodeon. Well, I wiggled my way into being that animator. So he sticks his head out and sees the, the real world. Ah! And then I see the cartoon character coming out of my computer and I go, ah! And it's the same screen. So it's our little Easter egg. Right and I just did another one where I'm a pizza uh, 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 delivery guy. Not, not the old episode, but a new live action. The daddy of the guy, hey! So uh, those are always, always fun. I think we should have a live action spinoff, actually. Well, while we're moving to our next question, because I know we have other questions, we've got to come back on this side. We have some good questions over here. While we're moving that, what? What were the things for you in animation when you were growing up? What did you watch? What were the things that you loved? There's a very good similarity, and I was going to mention this. Looney Tunes. Now, Looney Tunes is what I grew up with. They're very similar cartoons because we're both 11 minute shorts. So we're not half hour cartoons. We both use classic uh, cartoon animation. In other words, you get hit in the face with a frying pan and for a few seconds your face is the shape of the frying pan. Uh, SpongeBob goes on a, a frying jag and he becomes a lawn sprinkler. You know, these are things that both of those franchises built upon and, and we really only do in cartoons. Well, of course, nowadays you can do it in CG. But that's, that's our link and so many people come to me and come to us at uh, Comic-Cons and thank us for their childhood. And that's, that's one of the most wonderful things for, for us. And that's exactly what I would have said to Mel Blank if I could have uh, had the chance to meet him. You know. So we're, we're very similar. We're very uh, irreverent in certain ways, just like Looney Tunes, but funny. So we, it, and it's, it's a high bar to uh, uh, aspire to. Do you, do you have a favorite Looney Tunes character? Yeah, I gotta thank Daffy Duck because he's 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 kind of like Squidward. He's always getting the short end of the stick there, and his response to getting that bad uh, occurrence is, is what's funny. Yeah, same line. Yeah, awesome. All right, so we have a question over here. We got a little beat over here. What's your favorite show? My favorite show. Let me be. Favorite favorite food. Favorite food. Favorite food. Well, yeah, favorite, favorite food. food. Coral bits. <laughs> they're crunchy, they're tasty, a little salty because of the, the seawater. We got another question back here. We got a couple back here. Let's move back over here. She's breaking your microphone. Don't try to shout. It's fine, we got it. Throw a microphone here. It's on its way. What's the gravity bag super formula? I can't tell you, you have to die. <laughs> You like Cloudy Patties, don't you, Squidward? <laughs> that, that one shot, that one gag, we call it, of Spongebob, that look in his face. <laughs> yeah! Uh -huh. it's, it's my favorite look Spongebob ever has had. Uh, no, I don't like them. What? I know you're going keep eating them. What's going to happen? Am I going to explode? No, it'll go to your thighs. Then you'll explode. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. We have super fans down here. We have a few more questions we're going to move through. I got a couple that are over here, hands raised high. We're working our way over to them at the moment. Is there a thing that hasn't happened on SpongeBob yet that you would like to see happen? Squidward did his own show. Can we do that? Can we start a petition? Well, you know, Patrick got his show, which I think is very, very funny. Um, there's other things I can't mention that might be in the pipeline, but there's there's things in the SpongeBob universe that are still going on. So thank God we are uh, 24 years and still breathing. I like that. I like that. Where'd my microphone go? Right behind you, and then work your way that way. You have a question right behind you, and then work your way to your. Is that is an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Horseradish <laughs> is not an instrument either. Why are you, why are you? Too bad they didn't kill me. How often do you have hot mic incidents? Hot mic incidents. Well, it's one of those life's lessons 
Uh, you don't cuss a lot because you'll do it in the wrong spot. <laughs> Cussing at a funeral is not exactly a great thing, you know. And so you just gotta, you know, just put a rein on yourself and get into good habits, you know. Now, as far as the show goes, there is a reel of recordings. We record a certain way. This is one of those evolution things that we developed in, in how we record SpongeBob. We'll do, say, two pages of script, and we'll do two takes, which is just what is on the page, what the, the, uh, the writers and the animators want. And then we do a third take we call the crazy take. We can do anything we darn well please. We improvise, we go, you know, kind of off color just for our own amusement. Sometimes a lot off color. And everything is being recorded. So somewhere in Nickelodeon, there, there is this thing that'll make you have to take a shower after you hear Wow. Speaking of which, the episode Sailor Mouth. Remember that? <laughs> When, of course, when, when people actually do cuss, they, they put in the uh, corporate sounds and whatnot to do that. When Clancy Brown, Mr. Krabs, got, got his uh, toe stuck at the end of the episode, and he goes off on his tirade, um, Stephen said, you know, it's, it's not really sounding right with you just you know, doing gibberish. Um, do, the, do the lines really cussing. And he did. Like, and, and I sit in front of him, when we were recording, and I was learning words I had never heard before. <laughs> so there is again, the next time you see Sailor Mouth and you see Kraft doing it, he is cussing up a storm. I had to take a shower after he finished. Alright, we have one here, and then we have one back over here. Sin. Red hat after this question here. Yep. Hello. <laughs> So I'm switching. She's behind your phone. See, her phone matches her shirt. I got you. Yes. Uh, so, as Squidward, what is your favorite quote? I, you know, people ask that, and I have to really think because he has a lot of decent lines. Um, I didn't realize this was happy hopping moron dad. If I had a brain, if I had a dollar for every brain you don't have, I'd have a dollar. Um, Go ahead and hit me as hard as you can. Go ahead. Um, and, and we started doing a new thing, because he's, he's, he's just always put upon, and he's always you know, at the bottom of the barrel for some antic or what, and he just resigns himself and he just says, ah, typical. <laughs> so we've started doing that little uh, convention for it. But there's, there's other ones, gosh, I, sometimes fans know more about the quotes than I do. Somebody throw a quote. Hello, you have reached the house of unrecognized talent. Right here. What, what, is, what do you think of all like, the memes that are going around Squidward these days? Like that handsome Squidward and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I must be terribly behind the times because I haven't got into the mean thing. I, I, it's, I just think it's like a bumper sticker, you know, it's a small thing that, that, that you, run, you run a riff on, you know, whatever thing you're talking about. But what I never thought would be anything, I never got it at all, was FUTURE! <laughs> I never got the gag when we were doing it. I didn't understand, you okay, do your crunch and you go FUTURE! Okay, and it just caught on. It became it became as me already. You know? So there's there's certain lines when we come across them in new scripts that I say, that's a me. Just wait and see. You know you can that, now you can tell when it's coming. It's crazy. You, you you know ahead of time. All right, we have a question back here from this young man. Why is SpongeBob so annoying? <laughs> now there's a question. Have you met my agent? <laughs> I don't know. I, it might be his lab, it might be his ridiculous friend, and they live on either side of me, and I have to work with them. I don't like him. He's annoying! I think you got a good answer. Do we have no good? We got one right here. And then we have one up front here. We got a few minutes left. Let's have a couple more questions out. I think these people just want to go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> down the hall. Down the hall. Go ahead. Ask your question. What's up? What's up? 
Is this thing on? You know. <laughs> well, hello there, Mr. Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, that was serious. I know, I know. A side of it. So, Mr. Roger, as you were working on the whole SpongeBob series, I have two questions. What was the challenging part of you voicing Stripper throughout the entire SpongeBob show? And after Stephen Hillberg's passing, what was difficult for you while working on the show? Well, Stephen Hillenburg was greatly loved by everyone. Uh, he, uh, you would never think, if you met him, this, this gentle, uh, soft-spoken person had these things going on in his brain. So uh, we all missed him. We all still do, because we still love him. And just like when you lose a family member, you hurt, and you have to go on. And so we, uh, we, we, we endeavor to, to be as true to his ideas and his vision as, as we can. And hopefully, hopefully we are. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. It is an honor to meet you. SpongeBob has been my role for many years. I just want to ask you, how do you feel about AI technology and the ability to recreate Squidward's voice? Have you heard his voice in YouTube videos where it's clearly not you speaking? Yes, I have. I have been cloned several times. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very, I'm, I'm going to go on, on the limb here. I, I call it sinister because of its potential for misuse. Um, yeah, I agree. I, and, and, and it's going, human nature, it's going to be used in a bad way. It's going to hurt somebody somewhere. So I only hope we can kind of put the lid on the, 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 the genie bottle and, and, and keep track of it because it's a brave new world and I don't think I like it. I hear you. All right, so we have time for one more question. Well, these two, these two gentlemen right here. Let's get those two. Ah. Think of the Red Mist reference in the episode SpongeBob and Ryan the Um, you have to repeat that for me. But what reference now? Uh, the Red Mist creepy pasta. Red Mist, the Red Mist creepy pasta. And the deleted scene. I'm, you know, I, I, I must admit, I'm not familiar with that particular uh, the deleted scene. Uh, I know the gasoline scene I just came across uh, that they deleted, but uh, I'm, I'm, I must confess ignorance. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have three questions. What? That? He said he has three questions. Oh, three questions. Okay, Ask the third one first. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to the whole world of all shit, but like SpongeBob movie that shows um, people's animations in sports or movie um, on YouTube. I'm totally lost. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you clarify that a little bit, Frank? <laughs> Uh, which which video do you know? Uh, he's talking about uh, fan animations. Uh, you know. Have you have, have you seen any of the like the SpongeBob fan people doing their own animations that are SpongeBob? Music? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. It's, and just like a lot of the fans have come to my table and, and give me art, um, you, 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 the the talent pool is tremendous. I'm seeing a lot of good things. There was one that was uh, an anime opening to some show, but it was done with great anime integrity. It wasn't made to be funny, and I thought it was absolutely great. They're just transforming all of our characters into an anime kind of a cosplay thing. So the, 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 keep, if you're doing it, if you're trying to do it, as long as you keep a clean idea, <laughs> please uh, continue, because technology has allowed you to do all kinds of stuff right now. And discover your own talent, please. Awesome. Okay, listen, we are going to wrap this up. I know you're sad. However, you guys can go visit Roger upstairs, down the hall, and around the corner. Photo ops, autographs, and so forth. And you guys, you do that, right? You do that? Have you done it already? Do it again. Come by, and as Mr. Krabs would say, give us your money. Do me a favor, you guys. Give it up for Roger Bumpus.
all are welcome. Thank you, you are all welcome. Bye bye. Follow them on stage. Let's go get pictures, photographs, autographs, and all of the above. What it do, Snackers and Snack Guests? Did you like what you just saw? Would you like to help us grow? Here's what you can do. Shoot over to patreon.com forward slash loading snacks and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on your favorite platform of choice. Appreciate you.